snowing. I know. It snowed more, huh? Okay. You ready to come out? More, huh? Okay. Ready to come out? Yeah. You're okay. You're a good baby. Come on out. Can I get you fresh water? For some reason, the door to our main coop didn't automatically open this morning, which is strange, but it happens every so often. It's usually when we have weather, typically rain, but there's a button up top that I can press to open it. Silly girls and boy. Silly girl and boy. What's <coughs> one loud cockadoo to do? <coughs> I know, we hear ya. <coughs> Welcome back to Homestead Dreamers. I'm Elena, and today I have quite the story time for you. This has been an interesting week to say the least. And a couple days ago, I rescued a rooster. I came across this chicken when I was driving and initially I thought that it was a hen, but as I got closer and saw the tail feathers and I saw it had spurs on its legs, I realized that this was actually a rooster. My initial thought was that maybe it had gotten lost and kind of strayed away from home and was found in this location. But then I thought about it more and realized, well, the closest residence is 800 feet from where this chicken is. No one within a mile owns chickens. So it's really strange that this rooster just ended up here on this really infrequently traveled road by itself. So that kind of made me think that this was an animal that had been dropped by someone. And what really confirmed my suspicion is as I was rescuing this animal, a car passed by and said that the chicken had been there for three days. And mind you, it had snowed in that three day period. And it wasn't just a light dusting, it was several inches of snow. So this poor animal was sitting out in the cold by itself for several days in a row. And I'm honestly not sure how it was getting food or water, but it must have been maybe eating some of the snow and then scratching in some of the leaves to get some seeds or small things like that. So once I realized that this animal was in fact dropped, I knew that I was making the right decision. I'm going to show some clips from the day of so you can kind of see the day unfold and how I came across this animal and how I rescued it. I cannot make this up. I'm driving on a road. It's pretty much a back road and there's a chicken on the side of the road. I don't know if someone dumped her or what the status is or how this chicken got here, but I'm about to put this chicken in my car and take it with me even though I don't have a cage or anything. The chicken looks really, really cold and probably hasn't had food or water. So I'm gonna take him with me. Hey, how'd you get here? Are you lost? Did someone drop you? As I looked closer, I realized it's a rooster, which obviously is not the best thing to bring home. But for someone to just leave a rooster on the side of the road to just like let it starve and die is not the right thing. So I am getting a dog crate. I'm going to put some bedding in the dog crate. I'm going to get this rooster and bring it home, give it some food and water, and figure out the next steps from there. Hello, Mr. Rooster. I'm back. Let's see if we can get you in this cage. I have some really appetizing things. I have some grubs and some scratch and peck feeds, mash feed. Come here, baby. 
You gotta be hungry. I mean, I'm sure you found some things. Come here. I know. You're not that old, huh? You're less, you're about what? Six, eight months? Come here. Come here. Here. There you go. Yeah, get those grubs. So I got him. Someone just passed me on the road and they said that the chicken's been here for at least three days because they've seen it every time that they've driven past. That's not very cool because we just got snow. I think it was yesterday at this point and it was several inches. And so for someone to just leave the chicken out when they knew that there was snow, not cool. You nice and cozy? You liking the food? You're so sweet. I shoveled a little spot for him. <laughs> And I put the cage there and all the chickens are like, what the heck, who is this guy? Mr. Rooster is like really interested. Who's this other guy you're bringing in here? Who's this other guy? So here's his temporary little house. I wrapped a tarp around the dog cage and then I put a tarp around the corner of this chicken run. And he's just pecking away at some food. The hens are definitely not happy, but the rooster has not really had any interactions. So it's gonna be interesting to see what happens, but I think we gotta find him a new home. Fast forward to now, the chicken is safe and we now have two roosters, which doesn't really work because we already have a rooster and we only have seven hens. If you're new to raising chickens, it's important to know that it's encouraged that you have a certain ratio of hens to roosters within your flock. And even then, the amount of roosters you should keep varies depending on the living situation. So if you have animals that are free ranged, you can probably have a higher ratio of roosters to hens. But if your hens are in an enclosed space, you wanna be more cognizant of that recommended ratio. So for us, we really do not have enough hens in order to have two roosters. And if we were to introduce that rooster to our flock, we would risk that the roosters would start fighting and that they would stress out the hens. So what am I gonna do now that I have two roosters? I have several options of what we can do with this rooster. So the first and the ideal option would be to rehome the bird. And I would love to be able to do this, but I know that it can be challenging to rehome roosters. I'm in the process of trying to find it a new home right now, but for the time being, he is safe and he's gonna be staying with us. The second option I have is to wait until we hatch new chicks this spring and then integrate him with the chicks and then with the whole flock. So he would stay in the chicken tractor next to our existing chickens for the time being. And at the point that we want to take our chicks outside, I would figure out the sequence in which I would introduce everyone together. That's another important thing to know if you are new to raising chickens. You cannot just take a new chick, a new chicken or a new rooster and put them with your existing flock. That can be really dangerous for all of the animals they could fight and someone could get extremely injured. The best way to do this is to introduce them gradually over a long period of time. We like to do this by using our chicken tractor and setting the animals right directly next to each other, introducing them in a fenced environment, and then we free range them together and then we eventually put them together in the same space. But like I said, I'm not going to do that right now because I already have a rooster and I don't have enough hens and that could potentially be bad and we might end up with two roosters roosters fighting each other. So not doing that. The third option is to process the rooster. And this is also a very valid option. But if you watched our video on why we homestead, I talked a little bit about our experience with raising chicks and processing roosters. And for me, this is a very hard mental decision. This is something that I have to think about pre-planned and know in advance 
And that's kind of how we've handled raising our chicks in the past is we made the educated decision when we were raising chicks that if we were to end up with roosters, we were going to process them. This situation is different because this rooster just fell into our laps and I am not ready to make that decision. So for me, the first option is to rehome this animal. Second option is to try to integrate this animal. Third option is to process. That's what's in my brain right now. I don't know if that will change over time, but right now I'm not ready to make that decision and I'm just focused on trying to rehome him. This is a topic that's really challenging to talk about because it's not mainstream for people to raise and process animals. I think that in the homesteading space, I am in a safe space to be talking about this because you guys understand where I'm coming from with my thought process and my feelings. I feel very strongly that most homesteaders raise animals because they want to give those animals the best possible life ever and they only want that animal to have one bad day and for us even with the chickens that we processed in the past the first time that we did it I was hysterical I was so upset I just was like very distraught about the whole situation I'm an animal lover and we always joke that it's even a miracle that I eat meat because I'm such an animal lover but that first day I was so distraught. After we were done processing for the day, Alex told me that as he was preparing the first step in the process, he told each rooster how much he loved them, how he was thankful for them, and the thing that he liked about them the most, which is just so special that we are able to appreciate where our food comes from and be a part of that process. So I think that this is a safe space to talk about this and say that that's an option. I also know that I'm not the only one that struggles with some of these feelings. So talking about it is probably important so that you feel like you're not alone if you feel this way. So anyways, that's the story of the rooster. It's kind of funny because I've been known to rescue a lot of animals in the past. I don't know what it is, but there's just something in the universe just knows that I am someone who is going to rescue animals. I probably rescue at least one animal a year and they are typically either cats or birds. I don't know why, but it's just like a weird thing where I'm constantly rescuing animals. So it's funny because when I first started dating Alex, we were in college and as I was walking to class, I saw a little tiny bird on the sidewalk and it looked like it was injured. So I called Alex cause it was right outside his apartment. And I'm like, Hey, I found this bird. It's injured. Can you please get a box? I called the rescue center. They said that I can bring the bird there. I have a car, like I can take it. I'm going to be late to class, but I'm going to call my friend and tell her to tell the professor. So of course I'm like down there all panicky and Alex is like, I only have a beer box. Is that okay? I'm like, sure. Perfect. So as I'm waiting for him, I'm trying to get closer to this bird and I'm not even that far from the bird to start, like maybe a foot. It's a little tiny bird. And as I get closer and I step maybe like one or two steps closer to it, it flies away. I'm like, oh my gosh, are you serious? I thought that this bird was injured. So I just left and kept going to class because I didn't want to be late. And then Alex calls me. He's like, hey, where'd you go? I'm like, oh, well, I was going to be late for class. The bird flew away. Sorry. <laughs> but anyways, it's just funny because when Alex and I first started dating, he quickly realized that this was a part of my personality and that this was just the start of me rescuing animals. A second story about rescuing animals where Alex and I both rescued this animal together was when we went on vacation to Wisconsin and we were riding bikes around the university and I heard like a small meowing noise as we passed a construction site and I'm like, hold up Alex, we gotta stop. I'm pretty sure there's a kitten that is in this construction site. And what do you know, there's this little tiny black cat underneath a pallet sitting there meowing at us. And of course, this construction site had 12 foot tall fences and it was completely gated off and there was a chain around the entrance. So it was really challenging to get in. We didn't climb the fence, but since we are both relatively small, we were able to pull the fence open wide enough and then just kind of squeeze in. We spent a total of probably two and a half hours in this little construction site trying to get this <laughs> cat. It was actually pretty dangerous because there was rebar everywhere. The construction site had not been maintained in any sort of way. There were like cinder blocks and pallets everywhere. There was weeds overgrown. It was just very strange. But eventually we did get at the kitten and we called an Uber and we had this cat wrapped in a sweatshirt 
and we call this Uber and we get into the woman's car and she's like, oh my God, you have a cat. And we're like, just drive, it's fine. Just put down the windows. <laughs> and she, luckily she was sweet enough to take us to the SPCA and we were able to rescue that kitten. So that's another story about us rescuing animals. Um, so it's just kind of funny because it's a part of who I am. Obviously this is your first time meeting our existing flock. I'm actually at Alex's mom's house. This is where our chickens live. This is where we lived for several years. And so that is where our chickens in our garden are. We plan to move the chickens over to the new property, hopefully in the early spring. It's just been challenging with everything that we've had going on with building our house. I'm gonna introduce you to our existing flock. I'm gonna show you our existing chicken run and chicken coop. It's been here for about four years. And I'm also gonna share some of the things that I'm hoping to upgrade when we move them to the new property. All right, my pretty ladies, you wanna come say hi? One fun thing I wanna point out is our Hedwig's hen sign. Our first flock, we named all the chickens after Harry Potter characters. It was pretty fun. And so I made this cute little sign. It's now pretty weathered. I need to repaint it and fix it up. If you look at our run, it is a little bit run down. When we initially built it, we built it out of recycled wood and things that we had on hand. So nothing was pressure treated and nothing was really meant for the elements, but it's held up for four years. Now this door here is completely locked shut. We can't go in this door. It's actually falling apart pretty bad right there. I need to fix that so that no predators get in. But yeah, our run is a little bit run down. Like I said, we're hoping to move them sooner rather than later. So to get into the chicken run, we have to use this back door. We just have a simple lock on here and the door is sagged over time so it gets stuck on the ground just another thing to fix on the list so as i mentioned we currently have seven hens and one rooster three of the chickens that we have are from our original flock in 2020 we lost a few from illnesses we never lost any to predators last year we hatched chicks from eggs that were given to us by a homestead friend we ended up with four hens, and then we kept one of the roosters. I was initially really hesitant to keep a rooster in our flock. I've heard mixed things about keeping a rooster. I've heard that they are great for protection against predators, but then I've also heard that they can be aggressive and that they can stress out your hens. We figured we would give it a shot, keep one of them and see how it goes. This rooster has been super chill. Now he is less than a year old. He'll be about a year old in two months. And I've heard that when they hit that one year mark, they can turn really aggressive for some reason. And I'm really hoping that does not happen with him. He's super chill. You can see he's standing here right next to me. He never tries to attack me. He really does not stress out the hens that much. And so we've been really happy to have him as an addition to our flock. When we move to the new property, we are going to have a bigger threat of predators because we are closer to the woods. So we see fox there regularly. We've seen coyotes there. We've really never seen coyotes here at this property. And in the past like seven years, I've maybe seen one fox. So the biggest predator we have here is probably a raccoon, but the coop that the chickens are in is closed up safe at night. You saw that we have an automatic coop door that closes automatically at dusk. Chickens know to go to bed at night. They kind of put themselves to bed based on the amount of daylight that's available. So they can't see as well as it gets dark. They go ahead and put themselves to sleep and then that door closes. I mentioned that it sometimes is finicky whenever the weather is weird. So whenever it's raining, it's obviously cloudier. So the door has a tendency to shut earlier and then the chickens get locked out because they're all confused. They thought that it wasn't that dark out and then they don't get in there in time. So we always keep an eye on it when it's raining. I mentioned there's a couple of things that I would like to change about our run when we move it to the new property. I'm just gonna cover a couple of them in this video and then I'll probably make a whole separate video talking about this but a couple of things specifically about the run one is I would make sure that I have one area that is covered with some type of metal roofing we didn't do that initially we do have fencing across the whole roof for any aerial predators but the only covered area that, that they have is underneath the coop and it's really just not ideal when you have inclement weather like snow or rain they really need more covered area so that's one thing that I would change the second thing is that I would separate the run into multiple sections right 
now we just have one big open run area and one of my friends what they did is they separated their run into three separate sections with doors in between this is genius because if you have a chicken that has an illness and needs to be separated they can be separated physically but then they're still with their flock friends and they're not super stressed Another great thing is if you have chicks and you're trying to integrate them, then you can have the chicks in one little area, an injured chicken in another, and then your regular flock in the last section. It would also be great for situations like this where you have a rooster or an older chicken that you're trying to introduce to your flock. You can have them physically separated, but they're close enough that they can interact in a safe way. That's definitely something that we are going to implement in the new run. I also really love having this large run. I wanna make sure that our run at the new place is equally as large as the one that we have here, and then probably just even bigger because it'll have more sections to it. That is a lot of fencing, so it's going to be pretty expensive, but I think it's going to be worth that initial investment to make sure that we don't have to have another situation like this where we have like a chicken tractor, I had to put a tarp on it, do all of these things. It would just be really nice to already have those sections defined and implemented. I would also recommend that if you go that route where you have like one long run with different sections in it to have a coop on either end. That's another thing that my friend did. Karen, if you're watching this, thank you so much. You're amazing uh, they have one coop on one end and then a smaller coop on the other end I'd probably make them both the same size or maybe just like both really large coops the purpose of doing this is that as you have those chicks that get older and you're integrating them they have their own separate space to sleep in because you still need a safe enclosed space for them to sleep in at night and so it's really nice because then you would have that already built into your run those are a couple ideas if you are in the process of planning your coop and your run build definitely implement those things or even if you're upgrading definitely implement those ideas another thing i wanted to show you is our heated dog bowl setup for the chicken water i'm going to throw a link to this below these have been a game changer we upgraded to this this year and whenever i rescued this chicken earlier this week i went ahead and bought a second one we have electricity run to our coop so then I just have an extension cord running from that and then I hooked both of these up to that extension cord this works out really well whenever you have snow and freezing temperatures we've had temperatures down to 10 degrees and these have stayed unfrozen you guys are so pretty you're so well behaved you're ready for bed it's starting to get dark Thanks so much for joining me on this snowy winter day. I'll catch you on the next one. Hey, Mr. Pretty Rooster. You wanna come say hi? <laughs>